So assuming you have eyes and read the title of the video, you know that in this video we're going to be making a Pomodoro timer using Python and Pygame. So here we have our application and the first thing that we're going to do is press start and it's going to count down from 15 seconds, which is our Pomodoro time. Usually this would be 25 minutes, but because I don't want this video to be seven hours long, I made it 15 seconds. We can go ahead and press stop and it pauses our Pomodoro. Then let's say we're done with our Pomodoro, we are lazy and we want to go ahead and go into a short break. We can go ahead and click short break and that gives us a break of five seconds. Pressing start, it goes down. Let's say we want a longer break, 10 seconds. Usually this would be 10 minutes, usually this would be five minutes, but whatever. We can start the break and yeah, it's going to count down from 10 seconds. So for this, you're going to need all of these assets and the font, all of which are going to be in the link in the description. You're also going to need the boilerplate, which is going to be in the link in the description in a pastebin link. So let's not waste more time and get into the tutorial. So here in our code, we have our script and we also have a folder which contains our assets. So you can go ahead and download this in the GitHub. This contains our font, which you can't really display. It contains our backdrop and it contains the outline for our button. It also has this button.py script, which you're also gonna need to download, which just houses our button class, which we will make buttons out of. So now let's go ahead and go into our script and create the actual buttons. So here in our script, we have our boilerplate, which you can download, like I said, and if we go ahead and run it, we're just going to get our screen, which just has our red background. It has our red backdrop in the title. It says Pomodoro timer. And uh, yeah, it's just a basic Pi game script so far. Let's go through a couple of the things you need to know for this. So these are just our boilerplate stuff. This says how big the screen is and everything. And now here we have our text for the timer, which is a Pi game text object. If you don't know anything about boilerplate or Pi game, you can go ahead and check out my tutorial in the top right right now. Here we have our three buttons, which I'll be explaining in depth uh, in a few seconds. Here we have our variables that control how long each session is. So right now the Pomodoro length is 15 seconds, short break is five and long break is 10. Here we have our while loop where we are putting our uh, backdrop and filling the screen with a shade of red. So like I said, here we have our buttons and I'm just gonna go through the parameters here. So first one is gonna be the start stop button, which is just this button. And the parameters here are gonna be firstly the image of the button, then it's gonna be the position of the button, the width and the height of the button, the text of the button, the font for the text of the button, which is the font in the assets folder, along with its font size, and then the color of the button text to start out with, and then the color of the button text when you hover over it. So this is gonna be that button, obviously. So we passed in all the correct parameters. You can just copy and paste this from the link in the description. For our other buttons, however, there's not gonna be any images, it's just text, so we have no image here. And uh, yeah, we have our Pomodoro text, our short break text, and our long break text. If you wanna know how to make a button in detail, I have a video in the top right right now. Anyways, let's go ahead and put these buttons on the screen to start out with. And to do that, we can go ahead and say, start stop button, which is gonna be our first button, dot update, and we're gonna pass in screen. Running this, we're gonna see our start stop button in the center or near the center of the screen. However, we want to change the color of the text when we hover over it. So we can go ahead and pass in the uh, start stop button dot change color method. And for this, we're gonna need the position of the mouse. So pygame.mouse.get pause. Now running this, basically what this does is it checks if we're hovering over the mouse, I mean hovering over the button, then it's gonna change the color of the button's text. So running this here, we should change start to green. And uh, yeah, that's exactly what happens. Now we can do the same thing for the other buttons. So we're gonna go ahead and copy and paste this three times. Then here we're going to say Pomodoro button. We're gonna select this and say Pomodoro button. We're gonna select this and say short break button. And finally, we're going to select this and say long break button. So if we go ahead and run these, here we have Pomodoro, short break and long break, but obviously right now they don't do anything and neither does start. Let's go ahead and implement the timer. Then we can go ahead and add functionality to all of our buttons. So if you look right here where our font is, we also have our timer text, which is a Pygame text object. And right now it just says 2500. And we have our timer text rec, which basically just allows us to put the timer text in a certain position. So we're not putting it on the screen yet. So if we go ahead and do that, just to see what it looks like here, we're gonna go inside here. At the very end, we're going to say timer text or actually screen.blit 
blint timer text with timer text rect. Running that, we're going to see 2500 in the middle of our screen. So to actually add functionality to this timer, we're going to create a variable that has the current seconds. So basically, it's going to start out at the Pomodoro time. So let's say 15 seconds, then it's going to keep going down. And then we're just going to put whatever the current time is on the screen. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and go here and say current seconds. And that's going to default to Pomodoro length which is a constant here that is 15. So next we can go ahead and pass this into our uh, timer text. Instead of this, we're going to copy timer text. And instead of 2500, we're going to pass in an F string. If you don't know what an F string is, it's basically a way to allow us to pass data through a string cleanly. So we're going to say F and then we're going to have our string and then we're going to have curly brackets where we can pass things in. So we're going to say uh, current seconds, let's go ahead and run this. And here 15, but it doesn't go down to make it actually go down, we're going to create a timer in Pygame, And that's very simple to do. So just here, we're going to say Pygame dot time dot set timer, we're going to pass in Pygame dot user event, which is what we're going to call the timer and 1000. So basically, this is after how many seconds the event iterates. So every 1000 seconds, this event is going to be true. So here we're going to say in our event loop, if event dot type is equal to pi game dot user event. Again, if you don't know anything about pi game, you can check out my beginner tutorial, we're going to say print and we're passing in another f string, or actually no, instead of that, we're just going to say current seconds minus equals one. All right, let's go ahead and run this and 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, and so on. Let's wait for this to get to zero and see what happens. It starts going into the negatives, which is obviously not what we want. So we're going to go ahead and revise this code. So right here, we're going to say if current seconds is greater than or equal to zero. And instead of this, we're going to create two new variables. So the first one is going to be display seconds. So this is going to take the current seconds and convert that to a uh, time format that us humans use. So for example, if we wanted to have a uh, timer with 65 seconds, instead of saying 65 seconds, which no one uses to measure time, we wanted to say one minute and five seconds. So to do this is very simple, we just need to use something called the modulus operator. So we're going to say display seconds is equal to current seconds modulo 60. So this is going to return the remainder after division, after we divide uh, current seconds by 60. So again, going back to the 65 seconds example, if we have uh, 65 modulo 60, we're basically saying how many times can 60 go into 65, which is one, but then what is the remainder of that? So that is going to be five. 65 minus 60 is five. So this is going to return five seconds because it's going to be one minute and five seconds. Now we can do the same thing for display minutes. So it's basically just gonna be the same thing. What we put on the screen for our minutes, except it's going to be the actual minutes. So we're going to say current seconds divided by 60, first of all, to get it to a minute format, because there are 60 seconds in a minute. But we're actually going to convert this to an integer first because 65 divided by 60, for example, is a decimal, then we're going to put modulo 60 again. So let's run this through an example. So let's say 65, which is current seconds, for example, divided by 60 is going to be one point something. Okay. And when we convert that to an integer, it's going to be one. So then it's going to check what is one modulo 60. How many times can 60 go into one? First of all, it's going to be zero. And what is the remainder of that? Well, it goes into one zero times. So the remainder is going to be one. So because of this, we're going to get display minutes is equal to one and display seconds is equal to five. So one minute and five seconds, running this through another example, let's say current seconds is equal to 120, then we're going to get 120 divided by 60, which actually does go through cleanly, it's going to be two, and then two modulo 60, well, 60 goes into two is zero times and the remainder after division therefore is two. So we're going to get display minutes is equal to two. And for this one display seconds, it's going to be 120 modulo 60. So how many times can 60 go into 120? 
Well, it goes into 120 twice perfectly, right? So that means that the remainder after division is actually zero. So it's going to be zero seconds and two minutes. So I hope that little bit of math makes sense. Anyways, here, instead of saying timer text is just equal to current seconds, we're going to actually put in display seconds. But before that, we're going to put in display minutes. So display minutes and then display seconds. And then between that, since a clock uses a colon, we're going to put in a colon. And if we go ahead and run this, we should have this. Okay, so 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. But as you can see, when it goes to 9, it just does the literal number 9 instead of doing 0, 9, which is what we want the clock to do. And there should actually be another 0 on this as well, because what if we have like 25 minutes, for example? So to fix this, we need to use something called zero padding which is actually very simple to do in Python. So right here in our string, instead of just saying display minutes, we're gonna say display minutes and then colon zero two. So this is saying we want to uh, add a padding using the character zero and we want the padding to be two. So for example, if we had nine, this would convert this to zero nine. All right, and we can do the same thing for display seconds. So if we go ahead and run this, now it's gonna say 0015, and when it gets to nine, it's gonna say 0009, as you can see. So let's go ahead and change this to something like 03 to show you what it really does. So now this is gonna be a padding of three using zeros. So this is going to return, for example, if it was nine, 009. Running this, as you can see, 000, 015, 13, 12, 11, 10, and then nine but obviously we want it to be two. So yeah, now we're gonna go ahead and add the pausing functionality. So we can go ahead and pause our Pomodoro when our mom calls us down for dinner and then we say, yeah, and then she doesn't reply. And then we just like, wait. So let's go ahead and do that. So to do that, we're gonna check if we've clicked the start stop button. So here we're gonna say if event.type is equal to pygame.mouse button down if you've clicked the mouse. Then if start stop button dot check for input, we're gonna pass in pygame.mouse.get pause again. If that is true, then now we have to do something else. We basically have to use some logic. If we have already started the timer, let's say it's just going down, and we press the pause button, then that means we have to stop the timer and then it's paused. But if the timer is already paused and we press this button, we unpaused. And for this, we're gonna need a Boolean variable. So here we're gonna say started is equal to false. Now we can use some basic logic. We're gonna say if we have already started, then started equals false. So basically if we press play and we do this again, then it becomes paused. Else started is equal to true. Next here under this event, we have to add another clause, which basically just says, and we've actually started running this here. As you can see by default, started is false. So it doesn't count down. But as soon as we press the start button, it goes down. All right, that seems cool. But why does the start button still say start even though we've already started? Well, that is quite an excellent question. And I'm sure only a Baraltic subscriber like you would ask that kind of question because you're so smart. So to fix that, we're basically gonna need to go inside our event loop again and check if the Boolean variable started is equal to true, then that means we have to change the text to stop because since it's already started, the only thing we can do now is stop and vice versa. So here we're gonna say if started, then uh, we're gonna say start stop button dot text input. So the text of the button is going to say stop. Then we're going to uh, pass this line of code in which basically changes the start stop buttons actual pie game text object. So pasting this in, it's a very long line of code that just renders the text again, because now we've changed the text. So So now we can do the same thing, but the opposite way. So else, go ahead and copy and paste this and change this to start. 
So if we have started, if the timer is going down, then the buttons should say stop. And if we have not started, if we pause, then it should say start. Running this, this changes to stop now. Let's say we want to stop it again, changes to start. And that works. Now let's go ahead and implement the three buttons, the Pomodoro, the short break and the long break. So implementing these is insanely easy and I'll prove it to you right now. So right under here, we're going to say the same thing basically. So we're just going to go ahead and copy and paste this, but we're going to replace this with Pomodoro button. So if that is true, then we're going to say, instead of this, we're going to say the current seconds, which if you remember is the variable that stores the current time or current seconds is going to revert back to the Pomodoro length. So it's going to go back to 15 if we press that button. Also, we're going to say started equals false because as soon as, for example, we press the short break button or press the Pomodoro button, we don't want the timer to go off immediately. We want to have control of when we want to actually start it because if we don't do that, it's like it's just going without our permission, right? So started equals false. We can go ahead and copy and paste this for the other three buttons. So this is going to become short break button. There's actually two other buttons. I don't know what I was doing. Anyways, long break button. And we can delete this last one. We're going to revert this back to short break length, which is going to be five seconds. And this one will be long break length, which is 10 seconds. Let's go ahead and run this. Press start. It's going to go ahead and go down. Let's say we want to stop this. We don't want to do any more work. We want to go to short break. Start goes down. We can stop it start it again, it's going to go down all the way to zero. Let's say we want an extra long break, press start, it's going to go down until it reaches zero. And unless I am mistaken, we're actually done the entire Pomodoro timer. So here you go, you have a Pomodoro timer that looks pretty aesthetically pleasing in my opinion, although I literally ripped this off of pomofocus.io, so go check them out. Made with Python and Pygame, obviously. If you enjoyed the video or you found it helpful in any way, please consider liking the video. If you really, really liked it, consider subscribing because according to my YouTube analytics, nobody is subscribed and uh, I need 1,000 subscribers to start making money. So if you want to finance uh, more Baral Tech videos, you want to buy me a new, I don't know, RTX 3090, consider subscribing. Anyways, I hope to see you in the next video, but until then, have a good day.